So we wanna make you guys a quick video um, showing you how to install the Trailtech Vapor gauge. Uh, we get asked pretty frequently um, how to basically do the wiring on this gauge. And as you can see, I have the Vapor all mounted up um, with the supplied 7 8 bracket. And uh, this does come with a one inch bracket as well if you're using it on uh, uh, anything other than a scooter. All the scooter stuff is gonna be 7 8 handlebars. Um, but you can see this is just one way of mounting this gauge. You can mount it down low if you like it, off to the side, central, whatever you like. It gives you plenty of options on there. Uh, another word of advice is don't use Loctite on these screws. The Loctite reacts with the plastic and will actually crack this little bracket. So um, as you can see, this bike's all stripped down. Uh, it definitely helps when you're installing this vapor to get the plastics or at least, at very least, the leg shield stuff off. So you can run your uh, your RPM and your cylinder head temp wires easily without running into any issues or tearing the wires or anything like that. Um, so a couple words of advice on this stuff. Personally, I like to solder all the connections rather than using the supplied quick uh, little quick connector deals. These quick connector deals do definitely work and I haven't had too many of them fail, but you get uh, much better and it's much cleaner installation if you do solder the wires on. So that's all I'm gonna show you guys. As far as the actual principle of what wires you tap into and stuff, it's exactly the same. Um, the procedure, if you're gonna solder, is gonna be a little bit different. So get your soldering iron all heated up, good to go there. A um, Couple other tools that are gonna help you a lot in this installation. Um, basically necessary to get the correct power wire uh, tapped into, key on power. It's gonna be your voltmeter, multimeter, set in uh, DC volts, um, some shrink wrap, solder, flux, um, wire strippers, and uh, uh, a pair of dikes. Um, the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do on this stuff, um, there's a few different connections that go into the actual back of the vapor. Um, your first thing you should hook up on the vapor is gonna be the power and ground wire. And on the vapor, the power and ground is a male two pin connector. And this guy goes, uh, they, they made this so it basically only goes in one spot. You can see the male two pin connector, the only one it'll, it's actually able to go into is gonna be the correct one. So they made it so you don't uh, have any mistakes there. So that's gonna be your very first step in getting this installed is gonna be locating your key on power, meaning that you don't wanna wire this directly into the battery. Um, otherwise your vapor will be on all the time, the backlight and all that good stuff. You want this to turn on when you turn your key on. Um, so we get you guys started on that. Um, you get in the tripod and go from there. All right, so I think I got, I got you guys a pretty good view of what's going on here. Um, what you're looking for is basically the ignition here and I can show you what's going on. So with the multimeter, um, just go ahead and ground one side. I'm gonna do it on the battery. You can use frame ground or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, so first thing you're gonna wanna locate is gonna be the ignition. So this key is off currently. So on this harness, which this is a Raz, it should be fairly similar colors to like pre-bug. Um, any of the earlier Yamaha should be similar to this, but again, this video is not about necessarily what color the wires, it's sort of what you're looking for. Um, but anyway, so the red, the red wire going to the back of the ignition, as you can see, is key off 12 volt power. So that's a direct wire to the fuse and the battery. Um, usually on most of these ignitions, you can follow the pin and the pin directly adjacent to that one is gonna be your, uh, your key on power, which on most Yamahas, including uh, newer Zumas and all that stuff, your brown wire is gonna be key on power and that's anywhere in the whole harness. So as you can see, there's no voltage right there. As soon as you turn the key on, um, that key's on 12 volts. So that lets you know that the brown wire is what you wanna tap for key on power into the actual uh, trail tech itself. So, turn your key off so nothing gets messed up there. So um, depending on where you wanna tap into it, um, there's a bunch of different options on what you wanna do. If you're using the crimp connectors, you can simply just crimp it right onto this spot right here, no problem. Um, as far as this one itself, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna solder it. So what I'm gonna do is basically just get it right in the middle. Give it a little bit of exposed wiring on both sides. And then as far as the vapor wire itself, um, double check with your plastics on that you have it exactly where you want it. I've already done that, so no problems there. So, and you don't wanna go too tight because then when you turn your handlebars, it's gonna pull on these wires. You wanna have enough slack so you can 
turn the handlebars both ways and it's not gonna yoink on these connectors or your solder joints or anything like that. So give yourself a little extra wiring. You can always tuck the wiring into the body up here. So there, there's no real negative in having some extra wiring. Obviously you wouldn't wanna have, you know, all that wiring in there. So trim it to length. Um, and they give you enough wiring on these if you need to, to run this wire to the back. Um, although usually with these Trail Tech installations, I'm doing most of the wiring up front just so there's the, the less wires running back and forth, the better. Um, and it's gonna be a lot cleaner as well. So go ahead and trim that to length. And then this is gonna be two wires and it's sort of speaker wire style. They're kind of together. So get those, separate. So you're gonna wanna separate the red and the black. Give it a little snip in the middle. Um, also, when you, whenever you're doing this, you wanna make sure that there's no wire showing um, in the middle. Sometimes it can pull away the insulation on one, uh, on one side and expose some of the positive wiring. Um, give yourself some wire on the end. And on these, you can go ahead and tin the ends. And this is not exactly a, a lesson in soldering, so you guys can find another YouTube video for that or whatever, but I guess you could theoretically use this as a little bit of advice if you guys don't know how to solder very well. Come on. So once you get your wires all tinned, depending on the orientation of all this stuff, um, you can either wire it to this one, sort of like that. It doesn't really matter. Just find the cleanest solution for whatever bike you're doing your installation on. Um, this one, it looks like that's probably gonna be my best bet. So take these two wires, give it a little twist. And then get yourself a little shrink wrap. You can get away with using electrical tape, um, but I think it's uh, the shrink wrap works much, much, much better than using uh, electrical tape. And again, it's just a matter of how clean you want to do your installation. Personally, I like having this stuff pretty clean. Uh, even though you don't see it, it makes a pretty big difference knowing that it's uh, done right. And also if you ever sell your bike, anyone looks at your wiring, it's gonna be nice and happy. All right, now you've made your um, connection to key on power. Um, any of these soldering connections you make, you wanna make sure you double check that you've gotten all the way through, this one has. Pull your shrink wrap back. And there you go. Cool, so this one uh, I guess another tool to talk about here is going to be for the shrink wrap. Heat gun. You can use a lighter. Uh, I think heat gun works a little bit better. And obviously, since you're around two-stroke scooters, there's the risk of using a lighter and there's gas or something like that. So, probably not the best idea. So again, just make sure that shrink wrap's covering it all the way. There you go, and then as you can see, 
nice clean installation. Um, this wire will tuck up there nicely. Obviously this wiring harness kind of is going to get jammed in the front. So your next step here is going to be your ground wire, which the ground on this, um, you can do it to the, um, to, you know, on the Yamaha stuff, it's going to be usually a black wire for ground. Um, an easier option would be just to find a bolt in the front, like the bolt that holds the horn on this one. I'll probably go to the ignition right here. Um, get yourself uh, an eyelet connector. And what we're going to do. is just basically bolt this wire down um, and it's kind of hard to see probably in the camera but this bolt holding the ignition on has extra threads on the back so what i'm going to do is just basically use an eye connector um, and then basically bolt that wire to the back of this switch all right so as you can see got that attached and we'll show you guys what your test should be. So once, uh, and I like to test this stuff as you go, but once you get, again, so the power wire is installed on that one, you have it installed to key on power, and then you have your ground installed to chassis ground. Go over to your actual gauge itself, go ahead and key on, and you should see the gauge uh, light up as well as go through its startup procedure. That means you have your key on power done correctly. Um, you can run vapors, uh, without key on power, um, but you lose the backlight functionality. Um, if it feels speedometer or RPM, the gauge will go into this on mode and use the, uh, the inside, the battery inside the gauge itself, but you won't get backlight. So anytime you take your co your cap off, you're going to want to snip this back about a eighth of an inch to expose fresh, uh, wire. Otherwise it's going to be all messed up. Now. So once you get that done, get your single red wire from the Trail Tech kit. This is the uh, RPM sensing wire. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is start at the top of the coil, so away from the cap itself, and then get this wrapped around six times. So you want six coils going around it. Three, four, five, six. And it's okay if you have like half an extra or whatever, it's not, um, it's not exact science. So few different ways to, to get this stuff on to stay on here. You can use zip ties, you can use electrical tape. Um, I'll show you guys my personal favorite method, which is give a little plug for good old Harbor Freight. Uh, they have these multi-packs of shrink wrap, which is actually, you know, one of those things that's pretty good Harbor Freight pickup. This is the medium set, I think, and it's the largest piece in the medium set. This fits around the spark plug wire and that trail tech sensing wire perfectly. And then when you shrink wrap it down, you can barely even tell it's there. It looks much cleaner than using zip ties. Um, and also once it's shrunk down, it actually holds that coil wire in place very nicely. So get your six wraps, just double check. You have roughly six on there. Um, it'll work with less or more. It's just kind of, that's what they say on there. Um, So it's a little tight going over it, but what you can do is just put a little bit of carb clean in that shrink wrap. Get that tucked up nicely. Get the shrink wrap over the wires. Try to get the try to hold it so the wires kind of stay in the same spot because they tend to sort of spring out. Get that up there over the original sheathing. Make sure you're leaving yourself enough on the end to get your spark plug boot and all that stuff on there. So get that up there very nicely. Go ahead and grab your heat gun. And once you're sure that those coils are still kind of nice in their little pack,
get your shrink wrap nice and shrunk. And you can see where those wires are nicely held in place. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna pull back out. And yeah, so that's all you have to do in the back of the motor. Um, we'll get you repositioned and kind of show you the last of uh, the speedometer and stuff like that. Your spark plug and cylinder head temp stuff all installed. Um, do what you gotta do. Every single bike's gonna be different, but basically you run along the frame, um, run underneath the floorboard. You wanna make sure you don't put it somewhere where the wires are gonna get pinched. Um, run along the stock wiring harness or the brake cable or something like that. Run these guys all the way to the top. And again, these connectors are gonna be um, unable to plug into the wrong spot. So plug the single wire, single red wire into the single red wire for your uh, uh, RPM. And then this one's gonna be the wider two pin connector. That's for your cylinder head temp. Boom, good to go. And on this bike, I'm still doing other wiring, so we'll leave those out. Um, as far as the, the speedometer pickup itself. So the Trail Tech kit, get out of here, get the magnets. The Trail Tech kit is gonna come with this little setup and this works on most bikes. I've never had a bike where I wasn't able to get this to work, but I'll show you guys a couple other tricks here um, and the uh, magnet pickup for that. So as far as the actual speed sensor pickup, um, I'm not gonna go into the full installation. It's just, it's too different on every single bike to really give you guys a full example of what you need to do. There's two tricks I've learned over the years of doing these. As far as the speed sensor itself, um, there's two different ways I found to do this, uh, or as far as the magnet goes. So the kit comes with this bolt, sorry, focus. So it comes with this bolt. This bolt is meant to replace um, one of the rotor bolts. However, I don't really like doing that because this bolt is not gonna be as strong as the actual rotor bolts. So in most installations, what I'll do is actually get a nut on the back and a washer and that way you can find a spot. And again, you're gonna to wanna to double check on your particular setup if this is gonna be, um, if this is gonna clear the rotor and all that stuff. But what you can do is you can actually put the speed sensor somewhere in the rotor and then basically use this nut on the back side, and that just sits in there. Um, so that's one way of doing it. And I've never had a problem with doing it that way. It works really, really, really good. Um, the other option would be to use just the little single magnet. And this is what a lot of people will do. You use a single little magnet, um, stick it wherever you want. Um, and this, the inside of this rotor is aluminum. Um, so it's not exactly perfect for this case, but um, uh, you can stick it on anything that's steel. It will stay right here. And uh, honestly, like I've never seen these. I mean, unless you have a bike that you're going over hundred miles an hour actually move, but what you can do, you can use a little bit of epoxy underneath the magnet or around it or whatever to actually secure that to it. I, I don't really, like doing that method honestly um, and then another method with uh, the bolt on one you can obviously do this and replace a rotor bolt with it no problem as long as it's the same size um, just keep in mind that this is not going to be necessarily as strong as the rotor bolts that are currently holding your setup on another option for like this particular rotor and at, again every setup is going to be different this rotor has a little hole right here um, in the inside, this is a floating rotor, so this inside aluminum part is actually separate than the outside steel part. Um, what I'll probably end up doing once I go and actually install this is gonna be to drill this slightly bigger to actually accept that and go in right there and then bolt it down. So um, there's that. Um, as far as getting the actual, the actual sensor installed or the pickup sensor, um, Again, it's going to be totally different if you're using drum brake bikes. You're going to have to get sort of creative on that one. Disc brake stuff, especially if you're using uh, like an NCY style adapter. So this is going to be for most ruckuses and stuff. My favorite method. So right down here on this flat spot where you have lots of room or right there, you don't want to do it like in the middle of that. Basically, you're going to you're going to drill that to the exact size of the sensor right here. And the sensor has two bolts. Um, one bolt per each side, and that allows you to adjust uh, the clearance between the magnet and the pickup. That's my favorite way of getting these guys installed on uh, like RGS, NCY, Ruckus style front end with an adapter plate would be to basically drill a hole in one of these two flat spots right there and just uh, mount this magnet. So the magnet basically is gonna come out like pretty much right there and you can adjust the depth of it. So. Once you get that plugged in, um, Trail Tech will give you in the instructions 
three or four different methods of install of uh, getting your speedometer dialed in right. Um, oh, sorry, I blocked that. Personally, those are all like measure your wheel and roll out and all kinds of stuff like that that is fairly complex. There's a way, way, way easier to set your uh, speedometer. So what I like to do, get everything hooked up. Your speedometer is where it needs to be and it's picking up a signal. You can just spin your wheel and as long as it's moving these numbers of the speedometer, you know it's at least picking up a signal. Um, it's gonna be wrong, but anyway, go test drive your bike, see what speed it's reading, um, and then go into your settings. So once you go into your settings, um, go in this L L I F E whatever. I don't know, even know if that's what it is, but that's to set the wheel diameter. So what you can do is just go test drive your bike. Um, you're going to want to put your, uh, your phone's GPS in your pocket, or if you have like a Ram mount, that's ideal. Um, I don't advise this, but what I do is just ride with my phone in my left hand, compare what the phone's GPS is saying versus what the trail tech's saying. Um, go in there, adjust that LFE number, um, and you can just honestly do whatever number you want. All you're looking for is the difference of what that did. So if say for instance, your GPS says you're going 40 miles an hour and the trail tech says you're going like 20 miles an hour, you're gonna wanna change this number. Uh, and I don't remember off the top of my head if I'm pretty sure the higher the number, um, the lower the speed it reads. So if this is reading 40 and you change this number to like 1500, then that'll, that'll then read uh, a slower speed. So it'll read 35 or whatever. But the, the main goal is to just get your GPS speedometer uh, versus the trail tech um, and, then, and then change it and see what it does. Change it again. After two or three changes, you should be able to get it uh, dialed in exactly what your GPS is saying. Um, and then that gets you set to perfect GPS calibration, which you're never really gonna get by rollout or anything like that. So yeah, there's that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed.